Well, my name is J.J. Jimenez. They call me J, or Mr. J, or J.J. And uh, I've been working here for 29 years. I start uh, like a janitor. And um, I'm gonna miss this place. Yeah. I love my job. I know what I do. You know, I like what I do. Uh, Wayne Melionic. I started here in May of 1985. I was working at UPS a year to the day. I wanted to work here so bad because I'm from Salem all my life and driving by these stacks when I was a kid. This is where everybody wanted to go. And everybody said, go work for a utility. You'll have a job for life. Little did we know. But anyways, I was working UPS and I couldn't take that job anymore. I just wanted to work here. And I would say every month, six months into UPS, I would call up and say I wanted to work here. And I was talking to Lillian Bouchard, Lillian. who was uh, the secretary up in the, the manager's office. And then I call every two weeks, say I want this job. And she's like, there's no openings. And I called every week up until the last week at UPS. Right to the last day, a year to the day, I called up Lily and I said, I quit my job. I want to work at the power plant. She said, come on in Monday. We got a job for you. So it worked out beautiful. So, you know, I, I understand when you, when you put certain things in a certain context or you, cert you take them out of the proper context, you can scare the living hell out of people. And I think that's the wrong way to go about doing it. Because when people can't sleep at night or they're worried about their own health, unnecessarily, I think that's the wrong way to go about affecting change. This plant has been a, has been a victim of that for a long, long time. Um, ultimately now it's economics that are taking this plant off the, off the market and you know they want to build a new gas-fired power plant which is significantly cleaner than this plant and it's being fought tooth and nail. And um, you know, I just, I guess, my, my commentary is I just don't understand that. You know, I, I don't understand uh, how people expect to get their power, how they expect to, you know, the same fight occurs across the board on many different things, you know, uh, and, and I, just, I just think that that's unfortunate. The other things that you pick up is, you know, the, the safety aspect and the attitude that you have here, you bring it home, yeah. you know. <clears throat> if you're going to reach something, you know, you're a little hesitant to, to go grab the milk crate to stand on that. You're more apt to go grab a ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, you just, you're you going to secure the ladder. You're not going to reach out from that ladder. You're climbing up that tree to go trim that limb. Oh, I can get it. I can get it. You know, for taking five minutes to walk down the ladder and move it over is a lot better than four hours at the emergency room. You know? Yeah, it's or you want to or. or you want you don't you want to take a grinding shield off a grinder and you say it's okay. You learn you that grinder guard is there for a reason. Yeah. So you don't remove it. That was eight stitches. For three seconds. So, yeah, you do. You, what we've learned here, you do take a lot home. You'd be working in the shop, and there's a guy in there, Joe Brooke, comes in. He's looking for a reamer, and I had all the reamers. It, it like cleans out holes, it's, a, it's like a big drill bit. But anyways, he was looking for a certain size reamer, so Joey goes, can you help me out look for it? So we laid him out on the workbench, and, and we got him all rolled out, and we're talking like normal people do when they're doing something. You can multitask. I can do two things at once sometimes. So here comes Ted walking through the shop. He says, what are you guys doing? And I said, screwing off. <laughs> here we are working, and you plainly see that. He says, I want to see you in the office now. And I'm like, Ted, we're working over here. Now I'm getting huffy because he's saying I'm not working and Joey's screwing off. He goes, I want you in your office now, on the office now. He says, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm like, I'm not going to the office until I get my steward. <laughs> so I call up Betty and I says, Ted's, Ted's all over me. He says I'm not working. And I think I was all uptight. And you said, let me go talk to him for us. And, and I'm out here with Joey. I'm like, I can't believe this guy. He says, we're working all day long. And he's... So he comes out and he goes, we got to go in and see Ted. So we go in and see Ted. And then Ted said, can I swear? Yeah. You're fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, fuck you. I don't take that from you. And I don't even know what I said anymore. And he goes, calm down. I said, fuck you too. 
<laughs> and I ended up walking out. out. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I do. It was, that's a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you guys see it as a good memory? Yeah, it was just... Is they, he still around, or... He's probably long gone. No, he's, he's been out of here for about, what, six years now or something? Yeah, we died. He comes here. He'll be back here when we have our free lunches. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at the camera when you said that? No. <laughs> Basically, it was, you know, you know, it kind of a little change day to day, you know. You never knew what you were doing. Sometimes you finished one job one day, so you didn't know what you were going to do the next day. But they give you, you know, somebody to work with. You, just, you always work with two or three people, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Everybody knew, kind of watched out for each other. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fellow plant workers? As yeah. plant? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I, I guess, I guess all joking aside, uh, it's through the years we've met a, a lot of great people. We've worked with a lot of super people. Um, we've become, you know, friends, the camaraderie. We've been there for the good times. We've been there with them with the bad times. Uh, a lot of us feel that we're all just one big, you know, extended family. Um, when they laughed, we <coughs> laughed. When they cried, right. we right. cried. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really tough to see it come to an end. Yeah. The junior guy in our shop, the junior guy, is 20 years. That's the junior guy. And then it goes from Wally, which is probably the longest, to me, to every... We've, we've grown up here. Our, we've raised our families, buried part of our families here. You yeah. know? Yes, we have. You know? And we've all bounced off each other. It's, we spend more time here than we do with our wives and our family most of the time. Yeah. You know, for several years, we spent more holidays here together yeah. than we did with our own family. Seven days a week. You know, it was nothing to have... Um, 800, 1200 hours overtime a year. That's 40 hours a week as a, as a week. Then you put that into 1200. You know, it'd that's be, a lot of extra hours here spending. That's 2,080 working hours a year. There were, you know, some Chris, Christmases and New Year's. Yeah. I'd come in and relieve Charlie. Yeah. Later on, Charlie would come in and relieve mm -hmm. me, and we'd just keep working the job around the clock. And yeah. you know, Merry Christmas. Merry, Happy, Happy New Year. A little bit more expletive. Yeah.